Hello everybody, welcome to Theme Park Avenue, I'm Eric, and today we are going to talk about a list that makes sense because this is the end of the year, so now we will talk about my 50 favorite roller coasters I've ever been on. A few notes before we begin the countdown, first of all, I have not been on every roller coaster, not even close, the only international ones I've been on are Canada's Wonderland Rides, Tivoli Gardens Rides, and Thunder Dolphin in Tokyo Dome. So, do note this is just my opinion, and if there's any roller coasters I miss, it is possible I didn't ride them, but I will give explanations about good rides that don't make the cut. However, I haven't been on more than 178 roller coasters, so most rides I mention are probably going to be really good rides, and there are a few good rides that won't make this list. Anyway, let's begin. Kicking off the list is Demon or Daimonen at Tivoli Gardens in Denmark. Now, I've discussed this park. I mentioned that roller coasters are the weakest part because everything else is so good. And 50 was a bit of a toss-up. All the other rides, I knew how they were going to rank. This one, I felt is a bit better than what didn't make the list. This ride has a really interesting beginning where you don't really go down a big first drop, but it's still fast-paced. It's a shorter ride, but beautiful to look at, and there are some fun inversions. 49 is the Flight of Fear Clones, King's Island and King's Dominion. Quick note, all clone coasters will be lumped together as one. For example, I've been on four Batman the Rides. We'll discuss that later. Anyway, these rides are actually pretty fun. I like the darkness element as it does make it a little scarier, for the GP at least. The launch does take you by surprise a bit, and I do enjoy the layout. It is kind of crazy, but it is still a really fun ride. 48 is Riddler's Revenge. I really wish I could rank this one higher, but I haven't gotten on it recently as it was closed last time I went to Magic Mountain, so it's been about four years. I do remember it being a fun ride, smooth, good inversions, but I didn't remember as much of it, so it's not any higher up. 47 is the Batman the Ride clones. Now, the rides do actually vary a little bit, as I thought Over Texas's was a bit rough, and Great Adventures was really intense. The fact that they're clones does not take away from the experience for me. I think they're strong rides, even though compared to other B&M inverts, they are a bit slower and not quite as interesting. Number 46 is Knott's Berry Farm's Montezuma's Revenge. I did really enjoy this ride, the launch is fun, and I do really like the whole concept. It's like a much faster, better version of Superman Escape from Krypton. I know it's not as fast, but the launch is much more overwhelming, as that one's much more underwhelming. And I do really, really like this ride, but there is a lot more to come from Knott's Berry Farm on this list. 45 may shock some people, pun intended. Shockwave at Six Flags over Texas. I find it to be a slightly better Schwarzkopf, there's some strong airtime, great inversions, and a pretty good pace and a long ride experience. It's a fun ride even if it doesn't do anything particularly outstanding, it is just a great Schwarzkopf coaster. And the best Schwarzkopf coaster I've been on, and number one of all of those on this list, is number 44, Mindbender at Six Flags Over Georgia. The ride is really fun. It's much longer and better themed than Shockwave. The loops are separated, which does add to the ride experience more. And it never feels meandering at all. It is just a really solid ride. Even if it is a bit smaller than others that will come on this list. Number 43 is Firehawk at Kings Island. I should have mentioned that I am including defunct roller coasters, as there are very few I've been on that will be making this list anyway. And this was a really great ride. It was not exactly up to speed with like B&M flying coasters, but I'm really sad that it closed for Orion, and I honestly am not sure if it was the right choice. This was a really great roller coaster that was smooth and showed that Vekoma did have a bit of potential. Number 42 is Titan, a Gaio Vanola Hyper. Now, I think this one's a lot better than Goliath, as... Goliath is a pretty good ride, it's intense, and it has one airtime moment and a decent first drop, but 
it has the stats and not a whole lot to it. This one, however, is way more intense, which helps compensate for that not great ride experience. There are pacing issues, yes, but it is still a really fun hyper coaster. Number 41 is Hang Time at Knott's Berry Farm. Some people were saying this was a really great ride and one of Gerstler's best and that it was an awesome roller coaster, and I didn't like it that much when I first rode it. I thought it had a lot of headbanging, which is weird because it's a really new ride, but the first drop was strong and the inversions were really great. There was one airtime moment and one intensity moment. Rewriting it was a lot smoother, but unfortunately, it doesn't do anything too outstanding. Number 40 is Superman Ultimate Flight. Hold the comments. I think Superman Ultimate Flight is, while the weakest B&M flying coaster I've been on, still a really great ride. The pretzel loop and twist are great elements. And the ride keeps its fast pace the whole time. It does feel like you're flying. On one hand, it doesn't have a whole lot of outstanding elements, but it doesn't need to. The whole concept of the ride really just makes it a really great experience. Number 39 is Full Throttle. A good premier ride's launch coaster. The launches are really strong. The first loop is really great. Obviously, I wish there was a little more to the ride. But what we get is some really great Premier Rides material. Number 38 is Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. Some call this their favorite B&M floorless. I don't think it's quite at that status. The layout is obviously very strong as you can see in the picture with the dive loop, the vertical loop, and a lot of other things. However, I rode it and it was a bit bumpy. I get that it's pretty old, but... It still was bumpy, which does make it worse than some other rides that will come up. Also, apparently it was really well themed at the time, but I saw a lot of concrete slabs around the area. So, I was a little disappointed during my experience, but it is still a very strong ride. Number 37 is Accelerator at Knott's Berry Farm. I know a lot of you probably prefer hang time, but I enjoy this one. It's perfectly smooth, the launch is strong. There's a bit of air time at the big top hat. However, the flaw in the ride is that it is very short, but the big bank turns you go on in the elements that you do experience are really fun. It's a very enjoyable ride, even if it is a bit short. Number 36 is Cheetah Hunt at my hometown park. Of the four big Busch Gardens coasters I've been on, as I have not revisited for Tigris yet, I think this is the weakest one. It is a great ride, as there are a few good airtime moments, a few good intense moments, plenty of theming, and some powerful launches. However, I feel it's a bit family-based, honestly. The ride feels a little slow, and there's nothing really outstanding on the ride. It's a long ride and doesn't really feel meandering at all, it just isn't very intense or forceful, and I do wish it was a little more like Maverick. Number 35 is Daredevil Dive, which I think is significantly better than Hang Time. It's perfectly smooth, well-themed, the inversions are fun, but best of all, it's a really intense Eurofighter. I've been on SpongeBob Rock Bottom Plunge, and I do not like that one. It's quite bumpy and short. This one's a long ride and just does so much right. It is a really great fit for Six Flags over Georgia. Number 34 is Afterburn. When you guys see my number 33, you'll probably hate me for it, but let me explain. Afterburn is an intense B&M invert. It's really good at that. But the layout is lacking. It doesn't feel like it fits the intensity. It's not that great and I wish there was a little more to the inversions it feels like missed opportunity honestly it doesn't feel that much like a B&M invert which is why Raptor will take the number 33 spot Raptor is also really intense possibly more intense than Afterburn and the first half is perfectly smooth quite original for a B&M invert and I enjoy that my problem with it is the second half does get a bit bumpy in the helix.
Number 32 is Val Raven, and I really considered putting Raptor above this. But at the same time, my experience with Raptor was lacking a bit too. However, Val Raven is smooth, somewhat intense, has a few good airtime moments, and some strong inversions, but the pacing does have some major issues. I feel like pacing should not undermine, like, a really, really great setup with strong other elements, like the intensity, and I feel like it does a lot right, so I do need to put it a bit higher on this list. Number 31 is Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast at Six Flags over Texas. This is Premier Ride's best. The launch is powerful, the inverted top hat is great, the concept is really fun, and it does so much right. It's a reverse coaster where you complete the circuit and then you go backwards. It's a boomerang type thing, I guess you'd say, but it's way better than boomerangs. It does a lot right, it's well themed, and I'm glad that it is in a Six Flags Park. Two of them, actually. Kumba is 30. Some of you will be mad at me putting it below other Bush Gardens coasters, but... As this is the park I visit most, I've had plenty of rough experiences on Kumba. Kumba always delivers intensity, fun inversions, and a fast-paced ride, but it can also deliver a rough ride. I'd say more than half the time, I feel kind of banged up after getting on it, so there are some problems with the ride, but it is still a very good B&M coaster. Number 29 is Shikra. I put it slightly above Kumba. It does have some issues. It's a bit slow at times and not well paced, but the elements are fun and it's perfectly smooth every time I go on it. Something Kumba cannot brag about. Number 28 is the Incredible Hulk. This is the only roller coaster from one of those over commercialized parks that will make it on here. I don't know why Islands of Adventure put so much effort into this, but I'm glad they did. The inversions are great. They come right after another. The elements just go, 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 and there's never a slow part. The theming's really strong. Getting launched into an inversion is really cool, and it's just a fun ride. Number 27 is The Beast, the ride everyone has united and hating for some reason. I think it's still a great ride. It meanders a little, but I love the terrain. It's a long ride. And it has some strong elements and a lot of great moments. I enjoy long roller coasters because it means I don't have to get off as soon. And that's something the Beast does very well. Number 26 is Dominator at King's Dominion. For those who are wondering, Volcano the Blast Coaster won't be on here because I hate it. I think it's rough, short. Poorly done, bad elements, I just don't like it. This ride, however, is awesome. It's well-paced, it's intense, has strong elements like the Cobra Roll pictured, and it just feels like the fastest, smoothest of the floorless coasters. No roughness whatsoever, and it was worth the 45-minute line I, st I stood in. Number 25 is Nitro at Six Flags Great Adventure. Quick note, B&M Hypers are going to dominate the next 15 spots or so. So Nitro is my least favorite B&M Hyper. It's not bad. It's a great ride. It just doesn't do anything particularly great compared to the other B&M Hypers. But some strong airtime and some good intense moments and a pretty long ride experience do make for an enjoyable ride. Number 24 is Intimidator at Carowinds. The airtime is insane on this ride. Unfortunately, there is not a lot of intensity to really... um add to the ride. The airtime is great, even if there isn't a whole lot else to it, it is a really good ride, and one of Carowinds' is best. Number 23 is Gatekeeper, a seriously underrated ride. I really, really enjoy it. It's a wing coaster, the one airtime moment is strong, the inversions are fun, it's perfectly smooth, the near illo- the miss elements, sorry, are really great, and there's just very little to dislike about it. The helix at the end seems pointless, but other than that, I would ride this all day. 
Number 22 is an interesting roller coaster, Thunder Dolphin at Tokyo Dome. It is in Tokyo, and the ride is a hyper coaster made by Intamin. It goes through buildings, and it's a really interesting concept. Pretty intense, great first drop, some good airtime. It is a short ride, and there isn't a whole lot to the layout, but it's still really, really fun. Number 21 is X2, a roller coaster some people used to hate, and now is being called the best roller coaster at Magic Mountain, if not the world. I wouldn't quite go that far, but it is a fun ride. The concept's interesting. There are some strong elements and good force. However, I feel that the ride isn't that intense. I wish there was a little more to it to really have you get thrown around in, your good, in a good way. And I do love the left hill. They play Enter Sandman on the way up, and that's great. It is a really fun ride, even though it's not the best. Number 20 is Manta at SeaWorld Orlando, a great B&M flying coaster. A few minor pacing issues, but I love the elements. The water splash especially is a really iconic moment. I do really enjoy this ride. Well themed, good terrain. It's just a really awesome ride. Number 19 is Montu, my favorite roller coaster at Busch Gardens until Iron Quasi comes out. Montu is a great B&M invert. It's intense, it's long, has no pacing issues, really interesting elements like the underground Cobra Roll. It's just a really awesome ride. The only thing holding it back is that B&M inverts just aren't as great as some of the roller coasters in other models and manufacturers. Number 18 is Banshee, slightly better than Montu as it's bigger. The elements are larger, the ride's a little smoother even though there's very little roughness on Montu. And the ride's just really unique with the pretzel loop. It just has the best layout of any BNM invert. And I'm really glad King's Island made this. BNM inverts are really awesome rides, and this is the best of the bunch. Number 17 is Tatsu at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Another BNM flying coaster, and this one is my favorite. The pretzel loop is an amazing moment, and the rest of the ride is fun too. It doesn't feel very fast paced, but. That really adds to the whole feeling of flying, but the best part of the ride is the terrain. The usage of forests around you really does make it feel like you're flying. It's an interesting experience, pretty intense ride, and some really great elements make for an unforgettable B&M experience. Number 16, here's where B&M hypers dominate Behemoth of Canada's Wonderland. The first drop is one of my five favorite first drops ever. The airtime is pretty strong. The ride is intense, and the helix that is shown in the picture is really fun. There are a few slow parts to the ride compared to other B&M hypers, but it does excel in a few parts and aspects of a B&M hyper. Before you dislike this video, let me explain why Intimidator 305 is number 15 and my least favorite giga coaster of them all. See, it's an intense ride. It does that well. That's great. I enjoy intensity on roller coasters, and that's awesome. However, there's no airtime on the ride to balance it out. It's an intense experience with some great elements, but it's a short ride. I like the concept, and it's a bit overrated. It's still a fantastic top 15 ride, the best ride in the park, but there are a few flaws that kind of bring down the parts of the ride that it excels in. So number 14 is Goliath at Six Flags over Georgia, the best Goliath. And this ride is just all around great. A good first drop, some strong airtime, a good helix, and a really great ending with some strong airtime moments and camelbacks and bunny hops that do make it an all around great B&M hyper. Number 13 is Mako. Mako the biggest problem I have with the ride is that it's somehow not as smooth as other B&M hypers, and it's the newest one, which is weird. But, the airtime is fantastic on Mako. All the elements work well, but for me, the second half of the ride is the best part. It's compact, intense, and does take you around over the station and over the big water body in the middle of SeaWorld. It's an all-around really fantastic ride. The only thing holding it back is that it's not a really smooth roller coaster. 
Number 12 is Diamondback, my favorite BNM Hyper. This ride has a great first drop, strong airtime, intense moments, fast pace, really good pace. That's really what makes the ride all around awesome. And the water splash just really adds to the fun. It's a really fantastic ride. And if you're in Kings Island, this is the one ride you should go on. I've never been on Mystic Timbers, though, so maybe that one. Number 11 is Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. The other B&M Giga, or Giga in general, not to make my top 10. The airtime is really great on Leviathan. There are some intense moments. It's a long ride. It's well-paced and feels really fast. The only thing holding it back is that I just like 10 other roller coasters a bit better. Beginning the top 10 is a ride that last year would have made my top 5. Top Thrill Dragster at Cedar Point. Revisiting, the launch was as good as ever. Front Row Launch is one of the, if not the, greatest experience on any roller coaster. The problem is I now realize the rest of the ride isn't anything special. There isn't much airtime, but that launch is so good that it's honestly better than Intimidator 305's first turn. It's an amazing experience that is easily top 10 worthy on its own, even if the rest of the ride doesn't quite live up to that standard. Number 9 is Maverick, also at Cedar Point. This was tough to rank. It was really intense when I wrote it a few months ago. I got thrown around, I really enjoyed the feeling, the theming is strong, it's really fast paced, it never loses that momentum. And the launch that's indoors that takes you out is just the best. However, the restraints really, really hurt the first time I rode it. They were really painful, and this is the new ones after they fixed that, I thought. So, I realize this ride now is a really fantastic roller coaster, even though in the past, the restraints were much worse. There are a few flaws that do hold it back from being higher than the next roller coaster on this list. And that ride is Ghost Rider at Knott's Berry Farm, by far the best wooden roller coaster I've ever been on. This ride is an adrenaline rush, with unbelievable airtime, really great intensity, a fantastic first drop, and a long experience. This ride is the total package. It's a really rough ride, but that somehow adds to it. It's such an amazing experience, and I got off dizzy, which is rare for a roller coaster. It was a really amazing experience, and the only thing holding it back from being a bit higher up is that it just isn't quite as amazing as the top seven. Kicking off that top seven is Wicked Cyclone, an even faster-paced ride. Then Ghost Rider, really great pacing, fantastic inversions, excellent elements, a great first drop. The only problem is that, while it feels very fast, it is one of the slower RMCs, but speed is definitely not a major component when it comes to these kinds of things, even though I love Top Dill Dragster. Wicked Cyclone is my least favorite RMC hybrid of the four I've been on, but it's seventh best. That shows how amazing these rides really are. Number 6 is a really underrated RMC, New Texas Giant, at Six Flags Over Texas. This is one of the most intense roller coasters I've ever been on. It's fast paced, has excellent elements, really great airtime, fast, fast airtime, you just whip through those elements. And I'm a big Overbank Turn fan, and this had a lot of that, and since I sat in the back row, it was also pretty fast Overbank Turns. The N3 tunnels are really awesome, and this is really, really a great ride. And if you are in anywhere in Texas, it is worth making a trip just to ride this. And so we enter the top five. Superman the Ride at Six Flags New England kicks it off. Now a lot of people prefer Wicked Cyclone, but I think this ride is perfect in almost every way. The theming, fantastic. Beautiful views of the river to your left. And some really interesting Superman theming around. The airtime, unbelievable. Some of the best you'll get on any roller coaster. First drop, fantastic. Intensity, totally there. Long ride, yes. Fast pace, really great. The only problem, of course, is the restraints. 
some of the worst restraints on any roller coaster ever. But the rest of the ride is A plus material. So I feel like it does deserve a top five spot, even if it won't get any higher than this. Number four is Twisted Colossus, my first RMC hybrid. This ride just has some awesome elements. Beginning with the bunny hops is fun, the airtime is fantastic, the inversions are great, and every time I went on the ride, it was racing. The racing aspect is really fun. And it just shows how much effort RMC puts into their rides. The problem with the ride, honestly, is that it doesn't feel as fast-paced as the other hybrids I've been on. But because it's such a fun ride, I don't even care. It does so much right, and the elements are some of the best you'll get on any roller coaster ever. Number three is a roller coaster I honestly find to be underrated, Millennium Force at Cedar Point. Enthusiasts have decided that this ride is overrated. They think there's not a much airtime or intensity. However, I get great airtime every time I go on, and there's a lot of intensity for me. I've never grayed out, but I've gotten a lot of getting thrown around in your seat, and I feel like it does so much right. Night rides are fantastic. The first drop is the best on any roller coaster ever, period. It does so much right. It's a long ride. It's fast-paced. It does not lose that pace. There's no break runs. And I feel like it deserves the Golden Ticket Awards it got. I feel like people have been a bit too harsh on this. It's still one of the best roller coasters ever, at least in my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. Number two is Fury 325 at Carowinds. For a long time, this was my favorite. The airtime's fantastic. The elements are unbelievable. It's intense, it's fast, it's tall. It's like most of the RMCs if they were taller, faster, and even smoother. This ride does nearly everything right, and it's such an amazing experience. If you're pretty much anywhere in the U.S., it's worth making a trip to North Carolina, South Carolina border just to ride this unbelievable B&M roller coaster. Now, I wanted to mention Mindbender at Galaxyland. I went there last week, and it was closed, the ride. However, I think it would have made the top 50, knocking Demon to a 51. So, I just wanted to mention this ride. Anyway, let me mention the best roller coaster I've ever been on. I know it's kind of a unoriginal opinion, but I truly believe that the best roller coaster ever created is Steel Vengeance at Cedar Point. This is basically RMC Ghost Rider. The airtime is the best on any roller coaster ever. That outer bank turn is one of the greatest moments ever. The intensity, I got thrown around a lot in my seat, and I really enjoyed that feeling. The ride is forceful, it's fast it's well paced the brake run feels necessary i'm glad they added it and it's a long ride you weave through the structure and they did so much right here and there's so little that's bad the only flaw i can really point out is that the restraints aren't amazing they're not bad though i really love this ride and it just is the best roller coaster i've been on it deserves all of the respect it has gotten Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, and share your opinions in the comments below. Feel free to like and subscribe to Theme Park Avenue, I'll see you guys next week.